Just to prove that not all British films feature Hugh Grant swearing at some simpering posh people, we'll begin tonight with my favourite young British director, Cher Meadows. After several brilliant and quirky shorts, Meadows made his feature debut with 24-7 and has gone on to direct A Room for Romeo Brass and his comic homage to the Spaghetti Western, Once Upon a Time in the Midlands. Each of these films takes an unflinching look at the role of men in contemporary society and that's a theme developed in his latest work, Dead Man's Shoes. Dead Man's Shoes is a bleak tale of vigilante justice in the Midlands. Paddy Considine plays Richard, who seeks vengeance on the local hard men who've terrified his vulnerable younger brother, Anthony. I'm joined now by the director of Dead Man's Shoes, Shane Meadows, and co-writer, I should say, with Paddy Considine yeah. of Dead Man's Shoes. Now, um, in this, he's technically a good guy, is he, or a bad guy? Do you know what I mean? You can't... Yeah. I mean, he's coming to give the bad guys their vengeance, but you could hardly call him an admirable figure, could you? No, I mean, the, th the, th the film is... In parts, I mean, I think the audience's allegiances in this film actually sway quite dramatically. I, agree, yeah. I think that when this guy, you know, the base, if you look at the basic facts, something very bad's happened to this this guy's younger brother, and he, he was away in the army when it happened. And it's a classic thing. I remember myself, kid, young kids in the youth club, getting picked on, getting beaten up, and then they'd go in the army, and ten years later they'd come back into town and they're built like Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger and the few people that made their life a misery. They go, knock him out, back yeah. in the army, and, and job done. And I'd seen that firsthand. What's actually happened to his brother is, is really tragic. But the, the film's a little more complicated mm. than that. As you actually learn about the events and you learn about Paddy's character and why he wasn't there, you realise that he blames himself as much as yeah. he blames these people. What are you doing, lad? That's my concern. Not near my house. Where are you staying? Not since far. Gonna come and see me, over here. Maybe I will. You're not afraid of me, are you? If the justice system fails you, mm. or there's no way of bringing people to justice for something that they've done, how do you go on with that? Yeah. And ultimately, the answer that the film gives is that if you don't forgive and you try and avenge, that you just become the monster yourself. Yeah, yeah. And so it wasn't an easy film to make or to craft because we, we ran the risk of people thinking it was just a death wish movie, or, and, but we knew there was much more heart and complexity than that. What, them little lines in your hair? What, them? Mm. You did them. I certainly did not. You did? No, I didn't. When you cut it? I tried to look like a gangster. You know, I'm going to grow it anyway. What are you growing it like? I know, long hair. Like Bon Jovi. <laughs> Me and Paddy said, what would happen if you just put down all your raw ideas and actually followed them through from that very first? So we had one two-week writing session and then made a film. I wanted to basically go back to when I made Small Time, out literally in a minibus with, a, with a, a group of cast, a cameraman and a guy with a mic, no lights. We went round and we made a film together. And so Dead Man's Shoes was all about getting back to that technique. So did you have an idea and kind of said to Paddy, did you fancy co-writing this or, or how did that come about? How did you come to co-write the, the screenplay? Well, m myself and Paddy, when we made Romeo Brass, I mean, it was his first time even on a film set. Mm. So four or five years down the line, Paddy's been and made some quite big films and worked with a lot of great people. But I actually said, well, to be fair, if you're going to you know, play the lead in this film, and I know it's mostly going to be improvised, it, wouldn't, it would be a heinous crime to, for me to claim that yeah. I'd written all of that, and right. that's credit where credit's due, basically. Do you know why you're alive? You're a good man. Yeah. 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 I'll give you a deal. You tell me what I want to know, and I'll let you live. Yeah. Mm. There's one more. Where is he? Tell me a little about the fantastic acid sequence in it, because it seems to me that films through the past, be it Easy Rider or whatever, have a go at conveying drug experiences, and they're sometimes successful, sometimes not, but it's, it's kind of scurry and weird. What were you intending to do with that? I wanted to make a seminal drug scene, and you know, I set out to make one, and I tried my hardest to do it. <laughs> my experiences as a kid doing it, was that sort of flip from bright colours and everything being quite cartoonic and crazy to the ultra-reality of just sat in front of a fireplace with my head against the fireplace. 
you know, when you're talking about small time crooks and thugs and hard guys taking it, it wasn't like being at Glastonbury Festival, you know, yeah. it, it could be quite horrific at times. case of trying to not put too many effects in to actually keep it very real but it, it, and, it, and I knew a lot of it was going to have to actually happen in the sound mix as well yeah. and it really really you know hopefully comes off and and I made the guys stay awake for a couple of days because the only thing that comes close to acid legally is sleep deprivation. Yeah. It's a brilliant scene it's a brilliant film and uh, what's next for the um Scott says on De Niro of the East Midlands. Well, we've done the um like I said I think he did his Johnny Boy uh, in Romeo Brass Travis Bickle in Dead Man's Shoes, and we're going to try for the Rupert Pupkin angle next because Paddy's got a comedy, you know, an ability at comedy and a comic timing. I think it's, I think he's a comic genius, and no one's even had a hint of it yet. Can I tell him who's calling? Yeah, my name's Richard. I'm an old friend of his from years ago. Was you in the park this morning? Yeah, yeah. Did you meet my lads? I did. Absolutely brilliant lads. Yeah, crackers. they said they are crackers. Yeah, they've been shouted at today. Oh, right. Yeah, because they came back with a mask and a knife, so I was a bit upset, to be honest. It was blunt. I know, but it's a bit irresponsible, isn't it? I'm, I was really worried. Yeah. You're a good mother. Yeah. Yeah, I am a good mother. Good one, then. So, can, sorry, can I ask your name again? My name's Richard. And... Um, just tell him that you called, yeah? Yeah. I'll be around, anyway. Right, OK. Anthony's brother. Anthony's brother, right? Yeah. yeah. Todd up. <laughs>